Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. To have a very special guest with me today, she's a 3D artist. Please welcome Keely Majewski. Hello, Keely. Welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. So I want to go ahead and ask, within this interview, where are you from and how'd you get started into art? Yeah, um, I've always been into visual art since I was a kid, as long as I can remember. It's always been there. Um, even if it's been different mediums, I've always been drawn to it. So just from a really young age, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Now, who are like your favorite artists that you looked that you looked up to that you were inspired by? Oh, this is so hard because I always find new artists all the time and they just become my favorites. But overall, even though I would consider them a visual artist as well. They're mainly a music artist. Tyler, the creator, is like a huge mm -hmm. inspiration to me. Um, just his independence and his creative direction is so different from anything I've ever seen. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, especially his, like his visual, especially when he's on stage performing. I yeah, like, definitely. Uh, did, like this one performance where he had like the blonde wig, and then like it was like this avalanche thing. Oh was, yeah, yeah. Was, like like stuff was blowing in the wind or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that was very, very interesting. But yeah, Tyler Credit, he he stands out a lot, you yes. know, and, and he's the type of person that speaks his mind. So I can respect that about him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. That that's the type of thing. Now, what about like visual artists? Do you have any visual artists that you were inspired by as well? Uh yeah. Um, there's a guy that does animation and he also does 3D art as well, as well as uh illustration and hand-drawn animation. Um, and it's Ramon Jafari. Mm -hmm. um, I found him quite a few years ago. He did a video for Elton John. Um, mm -hmm. And ever since then, like his animation, everything really was like a huge inspiration for me, especially for 3D art and stuff. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Now, with your 3D art, are you self-taught or did you go to art school? Um, I'm actually self-taught. Um, I did go to a special art high school. Um, but back then I was mainly doing like watercolor and just stuff on paper. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually, I feel like that experience kind of made me stray away from visual art, honestly. And I kind of went into writing for a few years and mm -hmm. didn't even touch visual art, even though I kind it was always still there, you know, I still wanted right. to be involved, <laughs> but it was just, it took so much out of me, that process mm -hmm. and was kind of draining. And then it wasn't until 2020 that I actually decided since I had a lot of time off from the pandemic, from work and my day job and stuff, I actually dove in and taught myself 3D art. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Now, yeah. what are some things that have influenced, like what are things that you are inspired by in terms of when you create your 3D artwork? Um, just so many things. Um, a lot of fashion, early 2000s fashion, um, but it can really fluctuate. Like I'll watch a movie and I'll be like, wow, those colors like look so cool. I want to do a piece inspired by that. So it can really be anything, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Because with your work, it has that 90s, 2000s feel, but it's futuristic. That's yeah, what I like about yeah. your work because, you know, like it's that nostalgia. And I like how a lot of artists now, especially with, you know, me being in the, uh, the nail industry, mm -hmm. I'm a licensed cosmetologist, and, you know, there's nail artists going back into the Y2K, the year 2000 um, nail art designs, the French tips coming back. Yeah. You know what I mean, so so that's very, very cool. And the nostalgia is like where it's at because that's where the cool trends was, you know, in the 2090s or, you know, 80s. And mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, definitely. It, it's, I know it's like kind of trendy, but right now, but I just love like making my own spin on it and really kind of pushing the limits with that. And mm -hmm. Uh, I guess another huge influence would be just my day-to-day -day emotions. Like, I really like to express myself through my art. I know some people, like, tend to separate that from themselves sometimes, but I really like to dig deep sometimes, even when <laughs> I don't right. want to. <laughs> right. So it's a good outlet for me, definitely. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. Now, in terms of, like, fashion, like, what fashion designers are you inspired by? You know, how do you apply, like, that fashion to your work, in a sense? Yeah, definitely. There's there's a lot of independent fashion designers, but really early on, I was super into kind of like more darker aesthetics, like mm -hmm. Alexander McQueen and Rick Owens mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, 
So I feel like that kind of always stayed, like, despite, like, my inspirations and stuff. That was definitely always there, just kind of their really extreme silhouettes that they would put on the runway and stuff. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of, like, the main inspiration, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's pretty, pretty cool because, like, you know, I love Alexander McQueen stuff, like, the whole, yeah. you know, especially the stuff that Lady Gaga wear, like, some of his work, you know, like, the, yeah. the expressive, like, heels and, you know, the extravagant yeah. costumes, because he was a costume designer. Yeah. The thing is, is that, like, you know, this is the same guy that went to Central St. Martin's, and he was close friends with Isabella Blow, who was, like, another fashion icon, mm-hmm. and the thing is, is that it, it's really, really cool to see, like, you know, they were ahead of their time. Like Rick Owens too, like he's very creative. Like he's into that dark, how you said, that dark yeah. aesthetic, same thing with, um, there's another artist, I forgot his name. Um, his name is Gareth Pugh. You know, there's another oh, nice. um, fashion designer that he's into like that dark era. And, and, you know, he's very creative as well. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because, you know, that's the thing. Like when you make cool bodies of work, it's like, you know, people can gravitate to that more. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I want to get into in terms of with also your art. So what kind of programs do you use to create, you know, these 3D characters? Yeah, um, I actually uh, use Blender, which is free um, and also an illustration app called Medibang. And that's also free. It's kind of just a basic illustration program. Mm -hmm. Um, And for color correction and stuff like that, I use GIMP. Um, So everything I use is free and I'm like a huge advocate of that because I feel like it really opens the doors for like a lot of people to just jump in and like start trying stuff. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. I used to like work with GIMP. Like GIMP was was really interesting. I'm more of a Photoshop person, but you know, the Adobe stuff is very expensive, but good thing like there's the free programs available. Like you don't have to worry about paying per month or just paying a huge amount of money for a program. Yeah, GIMP is like the OG. I remember using that back in like middle school. Yeah, it's always been there. So it's reliable. <laughs> yeah, and plus it was popular too, mm-hmm. you know, um, years ago because there was a lot of people that was like into anime, doing animation. You yeah. Know, not, not animation, but anime um, art, you know, character yeah. art, manga. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, like that's so cool how they do it in GIMP and stuff like that. But also there's like yeah. studio paint. Um, yeah. You know, there's like this program that I only pay like 50 bucks for. It's called a fan designer. And it's like a vector program and it's an alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is like 200 something dollars per year. Yeah, (laughs) It's it's absolutely through the roof. But with Affinity Design, you pay it one time and then you just have it forever. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, There's some alternatives out there. Yes, definitely. I'm I'm all for it. Yep. (laughs) So what has been your whole experience in terms of just working with different artists or creating art for different clients? Yeah. Um it's, it's really amazing. Like, I I feel like I'm really lucky and I'm super grateful for this, but I feel like my art really attracts a certain type of person and Mm -hmm. they're just like super into it. So it's just been a huge collaborative process, like throughout working with clients for the most part. And it's been really pleasant and they like trust me with their vision and stuff. So Mm -hmm it's it's I'm just super grateful for it. it's kind of surreal honestly and it's so much fun working with people <laughs> yeah that's really really cool now do you yeah. charge for your work when you work with clients or you don't charge like how does that work um I do charge um it kind of depends on their concept and how complicated it is it is and what it'll be what it'll be used for in long run so fees will come into that and stuff but it does depend project to project and the time frame that they need it by and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I base it on. Mm-hmm. Now, what are some words of advice in terms of like, if people have trouble with pricing their work, like what are some piece of advice you would give for someone who is an artist yeah. that's trying to like price and understand their value and their worth? It's definitely hard, especially starting off. Um, you kind of just got to like take your best shot at it. Like I didn't really have, somebody besides close family and my boyfriend and stuff to like really run things by so I just kind of like went with what I felt was fair and like as an honest person just trying my best to like keep you know like payment plans open if people need time or like kind of just working with people at first and Mm -hmm. really just making sure it's accessible and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. Now, how important is having human experience and, you know, body positivity representation in your work? Oh, it's, it's definitely really important. And it, 
I feel like took a long time for me to get to the point where I was comfortable um, not only exploring plus size bodies in my work, but just because that's so close to me as being a plus size woman. Um, it was kind of like just wearing my heart on my sleeve, honestly. And I feel like I avoided it for a long time. Um, but overall representation, not just with plus size, with race and mm -hmm. different, all different things are just so important. And I always say like almost in every single interview I do, like art is for everybody. And I really, truly believe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. Now, what are some words of advice in terms of for one who wants to get into the 3D art? You know, like they want to like get yeah. into 3D art, but they don't know how to start. So what's some advice you would you would have for that? Yeah, um, it's definitely easier said than done, but I really believe just to start. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a weekend, um, look up some tutorials, like how I started back at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I just had, you know, a lot of free time, but I just sat down and when I was in a good headspace and I was okay with maybe failing or not making something that was like super cool, mm -hmm. I would just follow tutorials. Like, even if I didn't post the end result, like I would just try to learn the tools, like even if the tutorials were making something that I didn't think was like my style or something, I just, I just did it. <laughs> and it was really helpful. Um, even when you least expect it, there's all kinds of resources out there, like on YouTube and stuff, you'll learn something if you just do it and start. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like once you get into something, you'll definitely get, get used to it. You know, that's like yeah. me with illustrator or fan designer, you got to get acclimated to stuff, you know, yeah. especially driving a car. You know, any yeah. car you have to get used to, you gotta understand the functions, how to, mm -hmm. you know, how to maneuver with it and stuff like that. So that's very important. Yeah, definitely. Because once you get used to it, then you can apply that to your own work. And it really happens sooner than later. Like a lot of people put that off because they just want to make stuff that they already have in their head, you know, that they want to get out. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely worth being patient a little bit at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, what is your process behind building like a 3D character? Like, like, how do you plan out with, you know, a 3D character, like in terms of like the outfits or like, you know, the body yeah. shape and things like that? What's your whole process? Um, I try to mix it up. Um, that's kind of like the main thing, I guess, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing daily art for almost three years. So I do try to like, keep it fresh. <laughs> so it's not like the same thing. So I definitely look at my previous work that I've done like the day before, the week before, and kind of see like, how can I push this in a different direction? How can I do something else with the colors or, you know, the type of character and stuff? So that's kind of a good baseline for me to start with. And then from that, um, just anything that's influenced me throughout the week or the month or something that I'm really into can really, you know, push a certain direction with my work. So movies, music, anything like that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, what is your favorite like films and like music you like to listen to? Oh, I for movies, I really like weird stuff. Definitely like stop motion, like mm -hmm. underground stuff. So I'm always like on the hunt for something like that to watch. Right. Um, anything like that. But I'm pretty open to most things. I always I grew up listening to a ton of different kinds of music from rap hip-hop to classical music and mm. just folk music anything really <laughs> just mm -hmm. like always had an appreciation for anything depending on the day <laughs> yeah yeah because I could see like with the with your characters that you make is like how I said how it's futuristic I yeah. just see, like you know them moving to something like that's like some techno music or something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like that'd be real cool like to some like Kate Trinata or something yeah, I definitely had a techno phase in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be really, really cool. Now, what's your whole perspective on NFTs, in, in your opinion? Yeah, um, my experience hasn't been great. I, I dabbled in it a little bit just to learn more about it and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can work for some people, but for me, it's just not something I'm like super into. Mm -hmm. um, but there's there's no judgment there. I just feel like people should make the best decision that they feel like for themselves, like maybe it's a good financial avenue for them, you know, if they're mm -hmm. struggling or something. But for me, I just feel like there's there's a bigger picture involved. So mm -hmm. I just feel like 
choices should be made carefully with that kind of thing, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's totally understandable. You know, because especially yeah. like we live in times now where it's scams going on, you yeah. know. So, you know, if you do get involved in NFTs, you got to be, you know, careful with, you know, the whole thing with the scams and people trying to get you and stuff like that. So that's totally yeah. understandable. I've had a lot of uh, people tell me actually that they saw my work on this NFT website and, you know, people taking my work and stuff. So that definitely has not left a good impression for me <laughs> either. Right. Like, it's just a whole process to get it taken down and, you know, to try to prevent that. But of course there's, it's probably happened to many people and you don't right. even know about it. So it's just kind of not the greatest impression. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Now, what is your whole take in terms of copyright? Have you ever thought about copyright in your work possibly? Yeah, definitely. That's something I'm definitely looking into in the future. Um, I try to like, be as safe as I can be with my work and everything but Mm -hmm. of course if you don't know what's out there that somebody's taking it it's definitely hard to put a stop to it It, it's inevitable but yeah I'm definitely looking into that in the future yeah yeah Yeah, that's same with me like you know get into like copyright and stuff like that Mm -hmm. because there has been you know cases if not a lot of cases where people just take their work and put on a shirt or put it on like something Mm -hmm. you know or like for an event or something like that so yeah that's something that we got to be careful of because yes <laughs> don't want nobody taking our work you know yeah <laughs> yeah so so that's something that's very important now within your perspective like what is your take in terms of art and how it's a how it's been applied to technology yeah I think technology is super important and it obviously goes hand in hand with my work personally right now mm-hmm. um I do think people should be wary of how much technology they introduce into their life because it can become very unhealthy um just paying attention too much to the attention that you're getting and stuff like that it's definitely important to take breaks Mm -hmm. just for your mental health but overall I think technology is something that's beneficial Mm -hmm. yeah most definitely you know and and the interesting thing is is that we're moving slowly to AI you know, mm-hmm. self-driving cars, you know, yep. there's like a robot that could do like paintings and stuff called uh, Dolly 2. I don't know if you heard of that, but it's like this uh, AI robot that you take like two pictures from Google and the AI would just like paint it and stuff like that. Like, paint. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you want like a dog riding a bike, they'll paint, you know, a dog riding a bike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean? So, that so crazy. that's what I found very interesting. So, you know, uh, of course, you know, AI can't replace humans, mm-hmm. but, you know, as long as with AI, it's something for a positive reason. Mm. Cool. You know, I don't want it to get too, too much into that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, It's, it's tough. I have mixed feelings about it, honestly. Um, I, I do think it's beneficial and it can be really fun to mess around with. But like you said, I I really believe that it can't replace human interaction and Mm -hmm. the creative process between two people like working on like album art or something like that I feel like that's so personal Mm -hmm. um it's really hard to just put that in like an AI generator and like even if it's exactly what you say I feel like there's still like a touch of magic missing from that Mm -hmm. so I definitely think it's important to maintain the human connection yeah, exactly. Now, what's your take in terms of the, you know, economy, you know, the U.S. economy and how it's impacting artists? Yeah, it's it's really tough. Um, it it's been really tough, like not just for me, but for other communities and stuff. And right. it's it's unfathomable, honestly, like the stuff that's been going on, and it's really mm-hmm. heartbreaking. Um, other than just sticking together and really like remembering who we are as people, I feel like that's kind of the root of all the issues that are happening right now in the world. Like, I feel like people are forgetting that. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people would say that's technology or, you know, (laughs) other influences, like influencing that overall. Um, But I feel like we just really need to remember that for the economy and just for each other, like our interactions with each other. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely agree with that, you know, because the thing is, like how I said before, we're living in, you know, some critical times. And the thing is, like, prices are going up, gas prices going up, food prices going up, you know, people, you know, pricing their services a bit more and stuff like that. So stuff is changing. There's a lot of stuff that's been happening. Yeah, there really is. It's it's overwhelming. And I know I was just talking to my boyfriend about this, that I feel like a lot of people are tuning out to new things that are happening 
because mm-hmm. they just can't handle it on top of all the daily stuff that they have to deal with, like work right. or trying to find work and stuff like that. So I, I totally understand it can be overwhelming, definitely. Yeah, that's the thing. And especially when it comes down to social media, too, like social media always posts new stuff and everything like yep. that. So that could be another thing that just it could just overload your mind as well. Yes, definitely. Definitely. It can you can just like sit there and scroll and like it really sucked into it. And it's so damaging, like overall, like to do that. Like, I definitely think it's important to be aware. But right. when you're just constantly making yourself aware, it can definitely do more harm. Mm, right exactly now what are some things that you found the most rewarding in terms of being an artist definitely almost like on the same note of what we were just talking about the human connection like right I feel like I'm such an introvert introverted person um but I always have like strived to be really open so it's like kind of like Mm -hmm. a weird combination but just that human connection and really like making something with somebody and, you know, getting that reaction of like making somebody like so happy that their vision is like coming to life. It's so rewarding. It's the Mm. best feeling ever. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. 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 As long as a person has like that connection and people are engaged with you, that that's all that matters. So I definitely agree with that. So in terms of with brands or like any arts, is there any other artists or brands that you like to work with? Yeah, um, right now, I mean, I'm really open to whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> if somebody approaches me, like, I, I'll be down to, like, look into it and stuff. But mm-hmm. overall, I don't really have anybody in mind. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just kind of staying in my lane and doing right. daily art and working with clients and stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, what do you want the takeaway to be when, when the viewer sees your work? What do you want the takeaway to be? Um, I really want them to feel whatever comes to mind first, like good, bad, whatever it is, it's fine with me. Um, I just want people to feel something, but if I had to choose, I would want people to feel represented in my work or find some kind of representation of themselves, um, to really see, you know, I know I exaggerate my characters, but to really see you know, a beauty of some kind, even if it's a little bit strange, like, right. <laughs> and see that within themselves overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most definitely. How would you define success in your perspective? Definitely happiness. I know that's kind of mm-hmm. cliche, but, <laughs> and it's not always easy to maintain, that's for sure. And I think expecting to maintain it isn't great because there's ups and downs, but overall, I think if you're happy, you definitely have made it no matter what. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And also I'm glad that with our, within our generation, mental health is more talked about now because that's yes. definitely important. Self-care is important. Mental health is important, you know, and asking for help is important. It's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, I definitely struggle with mental health issues and mm-hmm. I have for a really long time. I'm, I, I don't think I've talked about it super openly in public but I'm all for talking about it like if somebody asked me like I'm totally down to talk about it but yeah that's always been a struggle and Mm -hmm. just working on that and art is something that's really helped me like you know I mentioned with the emotions and getting those emotions out like right sitting down every day it might be a little bit wild to do and not realistic for everybody but that is like really like my therapy for myself Mm, yeah, absolutely. Last but not least, where can people find you on social media and how can people support your work? Yeah, um, people can reach out for commissions. I'm usually taking client work every month. Usually towards the end of each month, I'll open my commissions. Mm. Um, people can reach out to me at Poy and Keely on Twitter and Instagram, or they can email me, which you can find that on my social media and stuff. And yeah. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Katie, for jumping onto the show. Your work is absolutely great. I love the futuristic thank you. vibe, very early 2000s, very nostalgic. Your work is absolutely incredible. This yeah. has been fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care and stay beautiful.